Hey guys, this is Kshitij live again from Shoot Guru and today we are going to be talking about weddings. Weddings are a very very good thing to actually shoot because they are about emotions, they are about people and of course they are about money. But today we are going to be talking about the creativity in weddings and we have a very very special guest with us is Mr. PK Suri from Mr. Uh, from PK Suri Studios Worldwide and he has over 20 years of experience and has done some amazing 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 uh, photographs and films and of course he also is an awardee in many of his shots so we're going to try and get him in and see take his perspective on how uh, what the what processes he takes what he thinks when he's doing these weddings and what journey does he take his clients through so guys welcome again to this live session with Mr. P.K. Suri and let's get him in. I hope you guys are doing well and uh, please put your questions in the comments. I'm going to turn off comments for a while to so put in the question box. Hi sir, how are you? Good, hi, how are you? Siddharth, how are good. you doing? Good, 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 good. Good to see you back in action. I know. <laughs> Good to see you. Actually, you've been always, you've always been in action. All these two past two and a half, three months that have gone by, you've been very, very active on the net. I know. I know. It's just been crazy for us because uh, we've actually uh, wanting to uh, turn it into an online thing, and uh, for that, a lot of work has gone in and everything. It, it was just a transformation of things to happen. Well, I think I think it's a fantastic way you brought about these this change and and uh, you know it's good for that because I mean I think at this point of time we all so badly stuck in our respective houses. Yeah. I think this is the this is the perfect way to stay connected and you know uh, impart and learn at the same point of time. And sir, so how's your lockdown been going? What have you been doing in the lockdown? You really want to know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So besides, besides actually sitting on the computer for at least about three to four hours a day and besides doing a little bit of the household work, uh, there's really not much happening in terms of shooting. Uh, yeah. But yes, there's a lot of work that's been going on in terms of, you know, updating our websites and updating our Insta page, working on images that, you know, from the past that we've shot, uh, you know, writing all that up, you know, talking to our clients, trying to figure out how things are at their end. You know, just keeping in touch basically with the whole wide world as much as possible. You know, we've got, uh, fortunately, we've, we've had a long, uh, almost a good close to three decades of uh, being in the industry. So, uh, you know, a lot of friends, family, as well as the clients who were there, uh, who have been with us. You know, staying in touch with them and, and just making sure that uh, everyone's doing all right and everyone's doing fine. You know, asking for all their good health and uh, wishing them a safe journey uh, at this, this crazy point of time. So I know, I that's, know. That's all what's happening. And as, as a photographer, there was always a question because um, you're in an industry where you have to travel a lot. You have to meet new people on a very regular basis. How have right. you been able to cope up from the fact that that kind of environment will not be back for a very long time? So, you know, I've got my fingers crossed, literally, uh, hoping that things do turn around and, and get back to its own uh, situation, how it was prior to the lockdown. Uh, you know, we, we, we're so used to that kind of an atmosphere as, as human beings. I think we're more so used to the, uh, you know, natural way of going about things, moving out without a fear in our minds of, you know, getting any disease and stuff like that. So waiting to get back into that same frame of mind and, and being able to do all the things that we were doing in the past, which is a way of life, I yet believe. I don't believe that this is a way of life uh, or, or this is the future that we all should be living. And to live in fear, uh, to live in safety is fine. You know, you, you, you try to do your best. But, but, you know, to live in fear is something that I have never related with. And, and at this point of time, it's, it's not only because of me. It's because of people in the house, people around yeah. us. That's the only reason why actually we get confined to our houses. Uh, otherwise, I don't think uh, I, I would yet be stuck at home. I would be yet moving out, uh, shooting around the place and, and doing the things I do on a normal day. Uh, unfortunately, the situation has brought about in such a way where everybody is scared. Everybody is scared to have a gathering. Everybody is scared to have a wedding. And a wedding 
and an Indian wedding or even an international wedding or anywhere. It's it's all about people meeting and having a good time. Exactly. You exactly. Know, besides besides the traditional part of it, the traditions that have to take place in terms of you know the wedding, whether it's a fera or whether it's a church wedding. Or whether it's uh, you know any format of a wedding uh, could it be a Hindu, Muslim, Christian, any kind of a wedding. The basic fundamental of it is besides doing the traditional uh, exchange of uh, vows and rings and uh, whatever it may be, Mangal Sutra. It's a gathering of your close friends and family and putting them all in a space together where you can enjoy with them. You know, be a part of that moment and enjoy that moment because you want to reminisce that moment for the rest of your lives. And we being a part of that process to ensure that they have images and films to actually look back and reminisce the moments and say, hey, I did that. And, you know, you know, my uncle, this is my uncle and this is my aunt and, you know, so and so, so on and so forth. So that process or that that fundamental enjoyment of a wedding per se cannot be replicated uh, by any other form of medium, you know, whether it's we call it the internet, whether we call it the new age, and we, you know, we're going to go on to these online uh, methods of, uh, you know, getting married, but it's never going to replicate the same. You're never going to have those kind of memories. You're never going to be able to sit and have, you know, uh, a, a, you know, a couple of drinks with your friends and, and enjoy that moment. So I believe that, you know, in, in time, uh, all those, at right, this point of time, we're all so very caught up in uh, this COVID issue, but the moment things are back to normal, I see the whole community, the whole fraternity, uh, everybody who's related the remotely to who's associated with this industry will be so glad and looking forward to getting back into the, the normal kind of way that we all enjoyed a wedding and shot a wedding and were at a wedding. So so looking forward to that, so that's, to be honest, and, and I'm sure that's going to come by. Yeah, all of us are, and uh, we just cross our fingers that that happens really fast. Um, I know it's going to happen eventually, but it's just that we want it to be a little faster than what it is going on right now. Um, we never want it to happen in the first place. <laughs> uh, yeah. In any case, before going forward, uh, I'd let's welcome our viewers. So thank you guys for attending. I've turned the comments off because we want to see you. The comments cover, cover your face most of the time. Okay. If anybody's got questions, guys, put in the question box at it right next to the comment box. It has a question mark on it. Do ask as many questions as you can. This is about wedding, film and photography and generally about photography as well. Uh, you can ask sir, about anything with his two over two decades of experience. He, can, he is going to give you some amazing tips. Don't miss out this chance. Um, again, sir, going forward, uh, one very important question. How did your journey actually begin and uh, what was your trigger to just pick up the camera and start shooting? Shruta, this is a super long story. I mean, we could we could go on with this for a good hour, hour and a half. You know, you and me sitting down with a drink would have been even better. But <laughs> but to cut it short and, and, and to, you know, just spice it up a little bit as well simultaneously. Uh, my entire family was into the photography business. We were all wow. from the uh, photography industry. Although my, uh, you know, part of my family was into manufacturing black and white equipments for the oh. industry. My father got into photography way back uh, when he uh, shifted into Bombay from Dehradun. And uh, his journey probably was right up to, uh, you know, 2006. But uh, he got into photography and then finally in somewhere around 82, uh, he got into the process of processing film rolls and prints for people. So he mm -hmm. set up a laboratory in uh, Bombay. That was the, um, there was the second laboratory in the country, to be honest. Uh, got our machines down from Singapore and, uh, you know, started the processing business. Where what uh, what year was from... this? I'm sorry? What year was this? This was in 1982. Oh, wow. So when, when color had just come into play. So he got into uh, the color processing part of it and set up the laboratory. And I joined him somewhere around uh, 96 where, uh, you know, I started going to the uh, shop and understanding you know, the color processes and, you know, how black and white prints are made. You know, I mean, I never did it at that point in time, but I was just learning. I was just understanding how it goes. And uh, I had and there were so many, I mean, the, the entire laboratory had about, you know, 25, 30 people. And all of them, you know, all treated me like a child. I was a child. I was just out of college, you know, just got into college, actually. 
and uh, simultaneously go to the shop and learning from all of them and they used to all sit down and teach me you know this is the color this is the way you do it this is the density this is the colors the, you know this is how we you know uh, keep our machines updated and things like that so there was a lot to learn i mean there was only grasping 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 i was not doing anything but just grasping all that and to be honest that that base is something that in today's world unfortunately we are not taught about you know yeah. the, the new generation has no clue no idea about uh, you know the color grading the, you know the actual colors you know how do you uh, you know how you mix the colors to get the right uh, uh, you know natural skin tone so that is something that in today's generation is is not available unfortunately but i was very fortunate to learn this at the grassroots level literally and uh, i learned that did that with uh, with him from 80 from 96 to about uh, 2000 uh, 96 to about 1992 or 4 and that's when i uh, you know i used to see these lovely prints coming out of my machine you know all these photographers you know fashion shoots happening and you know prints coming out of those lovely shots the portfolios you know the commercial work that was going on and i used to always wonder to my you know to wonder to myself that is this going to be my life where i'm going to be just looking at these pictures i'm going to do something about it and nice. i told my dad that you know i want to get out of this and i want to do something where i want to start shooting so he says you know be my guest just just uh, here's the camera here's uh, you know whatever you require it's all here so that's how i actually got into it and and no. it was an exciting journey i worked with a couple of friends uh, unfortunately one of the uh, one of my very close friends at that point of time was a photographer uh, he passed away in an accident but uh, i had the privilege of learning uh, a lot from him you know how it was to not only uh, uh, the, not only the technical aspect of photography but also it was more of a personalized relationship building course that i learned from him how he was with people how he did his shoots how he was uh, you know behind the scenes up behind the sets so that that kind of a uh, experience is something that you cannot get out of the books you cannot get out of the net it is only being there physically present and seeing someone how they operate that you can learn out of you know and 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 the uh, you know not only working behind the scenes with with these uh, uh, you know with with the models or with the uh, clients but also as is ethics you know the kind of ethics that were embedded into me because of this gentleman who actually you know did what was right so it wasn't just doing it for the money it was yeah of course there's a commercial aspect to it always but doing the right thing i feel is the most important thing in life you know so you can you can make tons of money through photography you can make tons of money through any other kind of work but but to do it the right way is something that i really grasp and i love that part of it so the mm-hmm. those kind of ethics stayed on and and uh, here we are today out of all these years uh, that i got into photography in, in 96 94 96 and then from there it was uh, no looking back well, i was doing photography for for about uh, uh, almost 7 to 8 years without actually getting into video and then okay. uh, in 2000 2001 we got into uh, you know doing filming as well for 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 weddings and actually those were the the olden kind of films that we used to make you know the long ones 3 hours 2 hours and and it was kind of boring and you, yes we wanted to get into something a little more you know different so we did start making short films but the equipment was yet the same it was not uh, in the slrs at that point of time when the that's dslrs right. came out and uh, we actually moved on to them that's when we realized there's so much of a potential and and uh, thanks to so many other companies that actually brought about the change we also went ahead with the change and and we we started making short films we started doing uh, wedding films with a difference and uh, you know that 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 change actually changed my perspective also you know it changed uh, the the way we were looking at doing uh, weddings the way we were shooting weddings uh, we got more creative we got more experimental we got yeah. we got into yeah. more risk taking uh, with our shots you know so you know at times you 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 know you you either go with the flow and do the normal shots or you just uh, adapt a, a risk policy and you say okay i've got my frontline guy here he's going to take the standard shots to ensure that we don't miss out anything and uh, one of the team members particularly at that point of time it used to be me that used to take all the risk uh, taking shots where we used to you know take another angle or move to another zone and at times you miss the shot because someone comes in your frame 
right in front of the camera and at times you get a brilliant shot so you you got the good bad and the ugly at times but uh, <laughs> we were always looking out for the good ones yeah. so nice. so that's that's how actually that transition came about for for me you know really? digital digital cameras actually changed all our lives and uh, for the betterment technology i say always helps out and and it did help us out in a great great manner so how hard was it to move from analog to digital oh it was a breeze it was a breeze so it, it's like it's like imagine you're driving a car with gears and then suddenly you get this car in your hand which is you know automatic which you you don't yeah. have to touch your gears and you, you know you're driving uh, you know one, one thing off your mind so you know when uh, digital cameras came in the most important thing was it had auto focus so yeah. you know that's yeah. one thing off your mind you know you you stop relying you, you stop relying on your you know your your eyes to get the right focus and you uh, uh, trusted the camera to do that part of the job you know so mm -hmm. so that helped out big time where you you know your focus your energy went into looking around figuring out the next shot or what's going to happen uh, you know next rather than uh, focusing and and trying to get the you know the zero down focus there so yeah, i think technology always helps and and that enhances you to start looking in a different manner through your lens through your viewfinder you start looking at your viewfinder differently because the technology is backing you up and sir but when you started when when anybody starts for that matter how do you think do you balance formal education with uh, unconventional methods of learning which is learning under somebody or interning with somebody or assisting somebody what is more important is it the practical aspect of assisting somebody or the formal theory that you learn in colleges or there should be a balance in between and how do you do that you know the the more you learn the more you the, the more knowledge you have the more creative you can get i believe that it it should be a blend of both uh, the more you can grasp uh, from your studies from your books from the internet it's great but there is no replacement for practical experience there's just no replacement so so getting on to the set uh, working with somebody learning uh, the ropes is is something that you cannot get out of the book so you can't get this from here and you can't get this from here you have to have a blend of both you need yeah. both the things to actually make it work together bolte tali dono hath se bajti hai so you need both of your hands to actually clap and make that sound so you need education technical education which is very very important and then you need to balance it out and start using it experimenting it and and being at the set and learning from someone who has uh, been there and and uh, who knows a little more than what you do i said out of all the genres in the industry why wedding i mean uh, I, i mean you were from an era where fashion was booming where uh, you were in mumbai bollywood bo was booming right um uh, we had uh, celebrity photographers popping up we had Uh, lifestyle photographers popping up. Wedding. Uh, why I'm asking this question is because when we talk about photography to anybody, the first question is, "Are do you do wedding?" People look down on wedding photographers and have been doing it for very long right. time. Uh, right. Right. I basically when I started doing weddings, I I still enjoy shooting stories. I shoot I shoot story. If I get a story based wedding, I do. But if I don't, I don't. It's a personal choice. but the reason i moved out of the industry was this because there were people who would just look at you like as if you committed a crime if you become a wedding filmmaker or photographer so why wedding and how did you come out of the stigma of uh, the industry shitej i actually when i started off i did start off a little bit in fashion i did work for magazines as well i did editorials for them i shot a lot of editorials for magazines and uh, simultaneously i did get the opportunity to do a wedding in uh, in one of my very close friends uh, uh, and and one of my cousins as well i did a couple of shots there you know so that was appreciated and uh, you know uh, one thing led to another where people started requesting me can you do you know uh, uh, can you would you also do weddings and i said of course i do weddings i just did a couple of uh, shots for a cousin of mine a friend of mine you know do have a look at it and and uh, they were they liked it they was impressed first of all there was a finesse in the way we were doing things it was it was different it was not the same uh, you know that's why i always say it's perception how how one perceives or how one wants to be perceived in front of other people so 
you can go wearing rags you can go wearing uh, not so nice clothes and go and and they're going to perceive you in that manner but the moment you are well dressed you are uh, you talk well to them you speak to them you you know you're a, you're another human being they're another human being as long as you're one on one at level with them i think then the perception completely changes you know of people so earlier i did get this thing from people that why wedding i mean why are you doing weddings why are you not doing fashion and you know i just felt that there was a a comfort zone there was a lot of you know i could communicate with people and they were like suddenly 200 400 people at the wedding and you know you're talking to people you're enjoying the moment you're doing your shots and people are appreciating the fact that you're being able to communicate with them and you know you're talking to them and you're making them laugh and you're you know striking a joke at times and you're getting some great shots with them you know so that comfort zone that i created doing a wedding could not be replicated when i was doing a fashion show or could not be re- replicated when i was doing an editorial and and i just felt that this this has so much positive energy you know when i was there at a wedding it is all positive everything is everything everyone's having a great time everyone's talking everyone's there is a positive energy that's floating around there now that energy got to me it got to me in a big way where i said you know this is a fantastic space and you know even though people may look down we're doing it with a difference you know we we're doing different kind of shots we we're looking at uh, uh, giving something back to a client rather than that regular you know flash on top and you know uh, 125 and you know you just plug in put the flash on and tak 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 at it you know and if uh, you know you're going and you're shooting with a whole the damn wedding and coming back so we were yeah. using 50 mm at that point of time also we were using uh, a little wider lenses at that point of time also we were using black and white we were using cross process for a wedding you know i was experimenting i was not doing just the run of the mill kind of shots because i had a front liner who was doing all the regular shots i was nice. ensuring that we don't miss out anything he was shooting with a standard format on the roll and i had two or three different cameras in my hand with different lenses with different rolls in them at different speeds where i was shooting uh, different moments and different uh, angles and 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 uh, bringing about a coffee uh, an album at that point of time with black and white images of 8 by 12 size and you know you know different uh, a uh, way of putting it together so people enjoyed that and and i guess that's where it took me uh, you know that's how the flow went and i just went with that flow and uh, that's how weddings came by and that's how weddings came by more and more and i just kept getting deeper into it so the moment you started getting deeper into one segment or one journal of photography the rest of the journals tend to take a little back seat although you mm-hmm. want to do it but you know the the uh, they take a little bit back seat and you continue on the same path so i was enjoying yeah. it and and until now i would say that i i believe that i did the right thing if i had a, a chance to repeat my life all over again i don't think i would change it <laughs> nice and i there's a very important point that you picked up is that you started do, doing weddings by doing it for friends and family and that is where you uh, experimented and i even i when i did my first uh, wedding it was actually for my wife's best friend and i totally went berserk with my experimentation where i did the photography and the film both just using one camera right. and two lenses wow that motivated me to uh, grow uh, more into the industry and uh, so my next question is sir is it always about getting the shot or is it always about getting the story is it always about getting the shot or getting the story for example uh, the shot when i say is the people say okay no sindoor ho raha hai this is the moment i want that is the moment you ca- you there you frame okay you do a decent composition and you click done but the story could be that you take the perspective of your of the groom and maybe perspective of the bride's mother who's looking at her daughter with this emotion and there is sindoor happening at that point in time i think that's a story so so when you say this i would say that fortunately we work as a team you know i have uh, a, a team of almost uh, 16 uh, people at this point of time also and and you know we all take up different responsibilities so if i am focusing on uh, you know the bride and groom uh, from a different angle i've got another you know uh, you know one of my assistants who will be focusing on getting the standard normal shots to ensure that we don't miss out the moment and i'll have a third person who will be capturing people around so you know nice. you, you cannot be at the same point of time at all three different spots so 
everyone takes a certain spot and and gets it, and then we put it together in the story. You know, so so that's how we actually create the uh, books and uh, the layouts, so that we capture mm. everything and then put it together. So that there, there has to be because, uh, you know, if if you have a team, if you're working with a team, you need to work as a team. You cannot be uh, uh, like it's like a football match where you know everyone does their respective jobs. A goalkeeper can't go and run and score a goal. He that's has true. to be there managing the goal. You know. No, no, that's true. And uh, how do you actually? What is the process that you follow from? Uh, you like uh, meeting a client to developing a concept and everything what is that uh, you really uh, are focused on so what is the process that would actually you would recommend people to follow when you are uh, developing stories or you may be uh, working with a client to develop those stories because uh, where i'm coming right. from is uh, if i talk about the shots that you've shared is these kind of really really fascinating concepts um half of them i couldn't even imagine i mean i don't even I, I, half of them is like for me this is beautiful this is abstract this is beautiful it is it has a story it is telling me something this can't be choreographed you can't ask a horse to lift his uh, hoof in a particular way and be posing for you it's 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 instant and so where how does your mind move towards developing stories and uh, uh, really uh, bringing out the i would say the emotions or the uh, the the ground reality of what the couples are going through so shit is just hold on to this picture all right yeah yeah hold on to this picture now as you were asking me about uh, how i go about creating a, a concept or what is the process i believe the process is always about first of all the moment you get in touch with a you know with a client and and uh, you you know have the opportunity of starting to uh you know they book you on and you start working for them uh the the most important thing i believe is to understand them really clearly and well as to what they want and what they don't want yeah. you know sometimes a lot of them do not want to do a pre wedding shoot uh sometimes they want to do a pre wedding shoot and if they want to do a pre wedding shoot you know you try and understand as to what are they all about what is this uh, what is this couple all about or what what are they as individuals how are they as individual people like mm -hmm. why i told you to hold on to this shot is because the, the uh, you know this this is an airy and sebastian and sebastian's uh, born and brought up in uh, florida and uh, a very close friend of them has a ranch okay a horse ranch and and uh, he loves horses so his his thing was he loves horses he loves being around them and he actually can have a conversation with a horse all right so i wanted to do a shoot with him and with horses all right and aneri was very comfortable with uh, uh, sebastian in terms of you know she wanted to do whatever he was comfortable with so i did take them out out of bombay into a, a place where there was horses and i we we already made the arrangements and we had these two beautiful horses that were there and you know we moved around the place shot them with the horses and there this particular place where they were going to sit and eat the, the horses were going to eat for a bit so i i told him just go right behind the horses and stand and i and i was down on the floor and i was lying down and and i this horse suddenly just picked up his uh, leg and i said okay that's my moment cut 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 and i got the shot so nice. you know it it is it is about the moment it is about understanding what the uh, bride and groom are all about uh, as personalities what are they you know what are their personalities what are their uh, likes dislikes and once you've understood that part of that uh, of the game i think half your uh, job is done to understand ki what can you do with them all right all the same i never expected to get a shot like this i never thought that i'm going to do this shot i never had any inclination i i just knew that the horses are there i'm going to take a low angle shot get down the you know on the floor lie down and i'm going to push them right at the end and let's see what i get and uh, well this happened so it is all about being there in that moment experimenting and then in show, trying and seeing what you can get out of it and, and sometimes you get super lucky sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you you like oh geez i didn't get it yeah you know you just move on you move on to the next uh, phase and you you get something better so some because you because you're playing with uncertainty the horses may not stay the horses may stay so th these are some un uncertainties in a situation like this nice and uh, so how important is it to spend time with your bride and groom and and also the family to understand what their uh, 
journey has been so that you can capture it for your stories so i think it's 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 important to understand the couple although i i mean how much ever i would love to spend a lot of time with them meet them twice thrice uh you know uh, go over for dinners or take them out for dinners at times it's just not possible especially in the season you know so uh having said that if if i do get an opportunity we sit down we meet we discuss we record the entire conversation so that i can take it back and you know hear it and uh, go through it again to understand it and i think that that does help a lot uh sometimes the you know the couple is not in the country they are both of them are in uh, a, a different place uh, you know it's difficult to uh, have a personalized meeting with them so i take the opportunity to uh, make a call to them and and chat on the phone uh, you know a three way commun- communication on the phone so it all depends but yes you're right it's important i think it's very very important to try and meet them a couple of times just to understand what they all about all about what they likes are what they dislikes are uh you know understanding their relationship uh, how it started how it grew and, uh, and and what are they looking out for uh, their uh, the future and, and what are they looking out for their wedding film what are they li- right. looking out in their images so if they're looking out for particular images i would always say that you know you're you're looking out for these images but you know you have to give time you know it, it, you don't get these images without just without giving time so you have to be a part of the camera you have to be with me you have to you know at, at that point of time when i request you just believe me and come with me for a couple of moments i will not take like a couple of you know more than 4 5 minutes and, and i'll get you back in but at the point of time i request you just slip out for a couple of minutes so i i i would never slip out a couple when they're having a great time when they are on the dance floor they're partying they're dancing i would never slip them out but during uh, you know just before entering the ceremony or just the moment after they are ready i would say okay come with me let's get a couple of these shots and you know get them back nice and uh, so like this is a very creative shot and i know it would have taken a lot of time uh, to plan it and execute it how hard is it to convince your client and how do you do it to explore your creativity because that is your show reel and that is your portfolio that fortunately uh, most most of my uh, work or most of my clients that comes to to us are uh, through the old medium of uh, you know reference yeah we always get referred uh, you know from one client to another and 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 i and i appreciate that so much for 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 our work and for for my clients ki you know they 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 do uh, take the trouble of pushing our name ahead and of and telling uh, telling other friends and family that you know do take your uh, you know their services because they they're professional they go they you know blah 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 all that kind of stuff but uh you know having said that it it convincing them i don't think i need to convince them i think i think what i need to I, what I, what i always do is i tell them that you know if i get that time with you and 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 if we do as we you know as i think at that point of time i'm telling you we'll get great shots because sometimes i i get to a location and i don't know what i'm going to do and then suddenly it all starts coming to me okay okay we can do this now the sun's coming up from here let's do this so we were out in the desert out here at about 5 5 4:35 in the morning and uh, and and i knew the sun is going to rise from that side and we had the camels already you know at the set and i told him just stand there facing you know the other side opposite side and just sta- just wait that the sun's coming up and i'm going to get that first ray of light there and it happened so you know when 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 you get them and and they know it because they've heard it from other friends and family already that you know just listen to him and you don't need to uh, you know he'll just tell you to be yourselves you know at, at times when they close up shots he'll just tell you enjoy the moment talk smile laugh give a kiss hold hug do all that kind of stuff and the moment just happens you know you just have to be looking through your lens at that one time and you you know you're not going to miss the shot and on that only this is a very interesting question that's come in uh, it says that weddings are equal to emotions has there ever been a shot or a moment where you felt that the picture captured wasn't enough to capture the emotions what you felt oh absolutely absolutely no doubt about it there there are plenty full times where where i have got the picture but i felt that oh you know they could have been you know a little bit if i had just placed myself a couple of inches ahead or maybe a feet or two ahead you know i i could have got a little bit more of the angle it would have been better so you know there are moments like that of course there are because you are in a environment which is an event you have no control on that 
you have zero control on the event you know you know the 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 pandit is pandit ji is going to do as he has to you cannot stop him you cannot tell him okay you know hold on i got to get a picture no you're just going with the flow you know so so there are moments that i miss out or i i do not capture it the way i would have anticipated or i look at the picture and i say i could have done better they are but unfortunately those are circumstances which are not are beyond your control you know that they're not in your control so you you instead of feeling bad you move on and you get some more you know and and fortunately with digital cameras you know you're not worried about your role getting over in 36 shots over and you got to change your role now anymore so you know you just go tak 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 you come back with 5 10000 images and then you start screening so yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I, there are moments where you feel that way and i feel that way a lot of times you know you always want to do better than what you've done and uh, those are moments where i say that oh i i could have done this a little more better and uh, what, what what is the creative process that you follow for example some of these shots are so innovative and for me they were first i've never seen these kind of shots before i've seen uh, similar shots so do you get inspired by somewhere or is there a process that you guys really follow to enhance the creativity of yourself and your team so you know this this particular shot that you're show, showcasing right now is something similar to this i had seen somewhere way back maybe about 15 years back all right i'd seen something like that and it just it was in my memory somewhere at the back of my head and and uh, we were in jodhpur at this point of time this shot was in jodhpur and uh, we come back from the dunes we were about to catch a flight in the next about 4 hours from here it was early morning uh, in about 4 or 5 hours we were supposed to catch a flight and we were early morning at this place and and they were uh, you know we were doing other shots and i saw this location where uh, i had the vantage point of being on a top angle uh, not a 100% top angle so what i did was i i did request them to lie down and and, and they were a little skeptical at the first time when i told them you know you got to lie down like this and do this they were skeptical and i told them just uh, lie down give me like 5 minutes do what i'm saying and and uh, i think we have a great shot here and uh, both of them uh, obliged they 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 put themselves in that position and i couldn't get to 100% angle uh, a top angle so i used a monopod with a self timer and and i pushed that monopod out into the sky uh, uh, just above them and i managed to get this shot with a self timer i didn't have the remote at that one time with me so you know things like that now this is his handheld this was completely handheld uh, but but you know th- this shot again is uh, something that i uh, I was at this point, and I was actually lying down, and I looked at the entire thing in a reverse manner, and and I said, "Why not try something different?" So I made yeah. them lie down with a fear of, you know, I told them just just open your mouth as if you're gonna you're falling down out of the sky, and uh, they obliged. And and uh, again, th- this shot is just a reverse shot completely. Very beautiful so, shot. It's a very beautiful shot. So these things, you know, it happens at the location. There was no plan. There was just. absolutely zero planning for these shots you know you get to the location you see the location then something from the back of your mind tells you oh oh i could do this and at times what happens is i get back to the office and i think i say oh shit that location had this i could have done something like that you know so you miss out at times but at times you get it uh this I, this absolutely one of my favorite locations the taj bombay yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's it's an it's an amazing location and 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 uh, uh this was shot somewhere around i think about 11:30 12 in the morning and and uh, the couple was so pooja incidentally had done her own uh, decor for her own wedding and she had a very little time to spare because she was uh, also instructing her team to uh, do the decor according to her wishes but uh, they gave me a good half an hour and uh, i i i got got about a whole lot of shots for them in that half an hour and answer how important is to draw inspiration from other people's work or you don't look at it at all and try creating your own no no i do look at other people's work i do not replicate other people's work i i get inspired i use yeah. thought processes from them uh, i would not do a you know a s u n a i would definitely tweak it tweak it depending on the location uh, you know whether there's you know top light back light front light you know depending on the location depending on the lighting that's available uh I, you know i would tweak it and work accordingly so there is inspiration i do take from a lot of uh, people on on instagram nowadays because i think instagram has become a forum where you know a platform yeah. where you get to see so much and there's so many brilliant minds in our country and as well as well as in the world 
so yes i do take my inspiration from a lot of these creative uh, minds it it does help me to understand but when you get to a location you may not be able to uh, do even uh, a to c or a to d because the location may just have nothing to offer you to that same kind of a shot so you keep it in the back of your mind and then use it uh, wherever you get a chance amazing and uh, so there's always a question about uh, when people are getting into this industry that there's a fear of uh, having uh, like getting disrespected in places i have i have had that had that with my team not with me as such but with my team where the there was somebody who misbehaved with the team and called them something how do you have you ever faced something like that and how do you actually deal with it and Absolutely. keep going without ruining the quality of your work and still maintaining a good relationship with the client so you know uh, situations have happened in the past uh, you know unfortunate uh, some people do not understand uh you know the 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 effort and the you know the uh, drive uh, behind the team members working and at times they do not give that kind of a respect which which uh, a, which one deserves uh unfortunately i i mean i i would like to actually you know have a talk sit down and have a talk with those kind of people but i just tell my team members we are here for a job we are here to make sure we enhance the experience of our couple and our client let's not bring it down it's all right we i understand and i apologize on that person's behalf but let's move on let's complete and if i get a chance i will definitely later on inform the couple and the family that there was a certain incident i just want to bring it to your notice i do not want to but i you know i i feel that it it is my responsibility to let you know that something like this has happened and uh, and and we go about our job and and uh, i think everyone's happy at the end of the day I mean that's that's the prime the, the the prime concern always is to ensure that you enhance the experience of your couple of the family you you make sure that at the end of the day they look back at you or after after 10 years they look back at you and say you know it was a great decision that we had this team on board they they performed well they behaved very well and and uh, you know they we enjoyed the entire process so you know you're there to not only give them uh, great pictures and a great film you're also there uh, ethically and morally to make sure that their uh, in their, their experience is enhanced nice and uh, so there, you've been in the business for so long and uh, you must have had good clients you must have had bad clients and at times it would have got very frustrating for you where uh, you have did you ever feel of of a thought process that okay I, let's not do this anymore and let's pick up something else as a uh, career in your life no i i i never had that uh, thought process to move on to another career never uh, you know i have enjoyed it thoroughly to be honest so that and i am being really bluntly honest about this that yeah there are times when you you know uh, someone does uh put you in a spot where you you want to think but i think the kind of positivity and the kind of enjoyment the kind of people that i meet every time that i go out for a wedding uh and the kind of conversation the kind of stories that we hear the kind of uh, you know fun that i have at the end of the wedding and you know and after that also you know when the couple calls you up and they give a you know they, they tell you something really nice and sweet it makes up for all that one uh you know stupid fellow probably would have would have said or done at that one of time it makes up for all that you know it's just pushed out of your brain it's pushed out on the side and you say you know tomorrow is a brand new day and and you're going to enjoy the day even better and and you're going to meet more people and it's going to be more fun and so what what the tip you would want to give to a newcomer in the industry somebody who's just starting off what should they be concentrating on for a uh, successful career so i would say at this point of time when anyone is starting because you know the market is so full up we've got so many teams we've got so many photographers we've got you know there there's no dearth of it now we've got a lot of uh, great good teams that are there in the in the market uh, and we all uh, you know looking forward to getting work but a new entrant today definitely needs to prove himself before he actually gets because this is a job where you have a very very uh, it, it's it's a very important responsibility that one is entrusting you with you've got someone's wedding that you're playing with uh, which can never be re replicated ever again it 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 cannot be recreated uh, if you do not deliver or you do not get the shots that are required you're going to ruin someone's uh, wedding so 
learn the ropes, work with people uh, that 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 you're inspired with. If you can get a uh, to be an assistant for a year, two years, three years, four years, whatever it takes you, learn. Do friends uh, weddings, uh, you know, as a second, third photographer, not as the primary one at this stage. Uh, get your portfolio right. Get your experience bang on first, and then take that challenge and responsibility of doing someone's wedding. Uh, don't get into it just uh, because you've got a brand new camera and you think that you can, uh, you know, you can use it and get a whole lot of good shots. It's not that simple. It is. It is. Uh, it, it's more complicated than that. And how uh, you important. do not want to be the person ruining somebody's wedding pictures. You know, it's, it's that's that so way. true. That's so true. So how important is it to have a good portfolio if you are looking out for work? a good portfolio only is is like a perception that again we were talking about earlier it is a perception you are giving a client a perception of your ability about your creativity so that is a perception that you're creating to a client uh, more important than that is actually being able to do that at the drop of a hat at that moment at that event without having to look back at your camera and say oh my i need to do this and i need to change my set and, oh i'm going wrong no there's something wrong no you it has to be like how you drive a car where you know exactly which gear you got to move on to it has to be a free flow and and till you're not in that free flow mode you know don't take up an assignment they work with someone learn uh, experiment if you have friends you have a you know if you have a brother sister you have friends that are ready to be models of yours take them out do uh, you know shots with them you know just work on your portfolio work on your experience uh, get to that experience level where you can say now i'm confident enough to do the uh, do the jig and, and not before that so i'm going to turn the comments back on just to see if there are more uh, questions coming in and okay. bef- uh, while i do that so there was another question um i think we did all so all the questions over there were covered so uh as a journey for a newcomer or as somebody who is starting off technical and aesthetics have to be worked hand in hand and Absolutely. how does one technical things i can okay we are hold, you're holding so many online webinars i'm holding webinars there is so so much going on online technically right. i can teach any i can teach literally anybody how to use their camera how to what settings they need to do what the shutter iso aperture does but True. how does one actually develop their uh, aesthetic skills how does one actually develop their composition and storytelling skills uh, as compared to their uh, technical skills what should they be doing about that everyday practice go out shoot it could be anything it could be absolutely anything you could be shooting in your backyard you could be shooting in your bathroom you could be shooting you know in a uh, you know on a bridge you could be shooting anywhere but street shots i think i think it's great to prop for people to you know actually go out and 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 just get street shots just to understand the lighting the you know the exposure the you know the composition the framing there is no i mean technically you can sit down and explain it to uh, you know people on on the net and give webinars and i can give webinars but till they do not pick up the camera and go experimenting and and practicing uh, it it's all going to just bounce off you know whatever you teach them is going to just bounce off it's not going to it's not going to register because you have to experience it you can't you can't uh, like get back to the example of the cars again you cannot you can teach on the drawing board but at the end of it he has to sit behind the wheel and press that clutch and accelerator and and know how to release it and actually start get the car to start moving so so person without uh, any practice is is uh, is worthless you have to you have to practice there's no two ways and this is the best opportunity when you when there's really nothing to do uh there's always something to do that you can actually plan and start doing so pick up the camera you know get on to the streets uh you know i mean this is the first time in during this uh they had the uh the luna the, the solar eclipse a couple of days back and the first time i actually was trying to shoot it uh i didn't have even uh, you know a proper set of glasses or anything to you know but I, it, it was difficult uh i did manage to get a couple of shots i wouldn't say they were great because i didn't have the right equipment with me i didn't have a telefocus lens on me unfortunately at this point of time yeah uh but but yeah it was interesting to understand how to go about the shot you know i've never done uh, uh shots way up in the sky ever and i said since i'm doing nothing why not try it so every day if you just pick up your camera and try something that you've not done uh that you would like to probably do i think that gives you one step ahead on the ladder you know you go ahead one step and that climbing up those 
ladders at the, at the end you'll be somewhere on the top where you'll be able to do a lot of stuff together nice and that's such a good tip i mean those so everybody's actually been talking about this practice 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 and i have talked to jassi about it i've talked to uh, nikhilesh about it all of them have said practice and i uh, so on basis on that what is the motivation that drives you to pick up your camera and go out and practice so for me at this point of time the drive would be to do something different like the celestial objects that i was going to shoot the other day all right but for someone who is getting into photography someone who wants to get into photography now when there's a want and there's a need all right then you either you do it out of compulsion which i think is not the ideal solution uh, i think it has to be a want it, i think you want to you know you want it so bad that you'd say okay i just got to do something i just got to step out i got to take my uh, my brother out my sister out or my friend out and just do some shots around the place so you know that is something that if you want to do you will find a way and otherwise you can have 120 excuses lined up right in front of you telling you why you shouldn't do it so that's that's the easiest part getting to those excuses are the easiest part but if you want to do something and you got to get it then you got to push yourself you just you, you know it just happens you know in fact my wife and my children were quite upset when i went up to the terrace to to get this shot they were like are you serious you're going to go up there you don't have any sunglasses you don't have anything to protect you you're just going to i said i'm not going to look up there i'm going to look into the viewfinder and and i'm just going to try it out you know so i set up two cameras i set up one on a uh, time lapse and i set the other camera on uh, you know very very high speed and and on uh, 16 and i said okay let me try and get this uh, you know the moment so i knew the timing when it's happening unfortunately you know in gurgaon there was a whole lot of clouds there that morning it was completely clouded and and i couldn't uh, get a great shot but yeah it was the first step there so i did climb up the ladder towards that one step and i think on the fifth we're going to have another one so i'm going to try my hand at it again so you 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 just got to move with your drive your the drive comes if you have the mot- if you if you have the inclination you will get the drive on your own you don't need to create a drive why should you be creating a drive there's a question how do you see perspective how do i see perspective okay so depending on on so my eyes are always plastered you know uh, either now it's on the viewfinder i uh, sorry it's on the screen earlier it used to be through the viewfinder completely i i used to not move my eyes out of the viewfinder i used to be one eye in there and the other one looking around as to what's happening so the moment you're looking through that viewfinder it has a different perspective compared to when you're looking through the uh, you know through your screen trust me you look through the viewfinder and you'll see life in a very very different manner and and when you look through that and you move yourself in different positions you you place an object right in front of you and and you look at that same object through your viewfinder in different you know different uh, through different angles you'll automatically start realizing the different perspectives that you can actually get and once you start understanding that more and more it becomes so easy for you to get the right perspective that you want to shoot this particular shot in and you can uh, you know you can easily get into that spot uh, right in time and especially in an event uh, sometimes i'd love to do a really low angle you know and and unfortunately because it's an event there's so many people there so it's difficult to get that angle although you try and squeeze through and you get there but you 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 can well very well connect at that point of time what's going to happen next and where you need to place yourself and what kind of perspective do you want because of the experience so there's mm-hmm. again no no uh, uh, i mean there's no other way experience really puts you uh, i think a couple of steps ahead and and of course creativity and nowadays i see such young creative talent that, that are there in the market and i could you know i i i see some pictures and i say wow these guys are super super talented they they've got something that uh, we've taken so long at times to achieve where they've got it in in, in about 5 to 7 years so there is a new breed of creative talent there and, and a lot of them are very professional in their work and i think it's probably they have that drive within them they have that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, from in from within there is that drive that you going to you want they want to do it they want to get to that level so the drive comes when there is a need when there's a want and and uh, perspective well i think you got you got to just 
experiment as much as you can for perspective and you'll get it nice. and so one last question because we're also sure. heading towards the end and this is an important question how do you manage lighting uh, during your shoots especially right. events and uh, how important is post processing okay so lighting during the shoots generally i always prefer natural available lighting uh, in places where there's fantastic lighting or there's decent amount of good lighting also i avoid using the you know uh, the you know the flash on board my camera totally but in situations where there's very very low light um uh, that those areas yeah i do use uh, a flash on top i i do use uh, a little a filler just to just enough to get uh you know the right exposure uh, and 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 just to enough to get uh you know the the faces uh, clearly enough if i require that if i require uh, a silhouette then i don't need to require it uh, the flash on board at all but but totally depends on the situation i do use lighting uh, on top of the camera besides that i don't i don't use uh, 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 lights at all an led maybe here and there you know if i'm doing night shots like this uh, shot that you see i've used a led on them so that i can i get their faces while i was using uh, the shot with the bonfire but but uh, that's about it led or a, a, a flash on board the camera that's it lovely and so how important is to post process your images and uh, uh, how well whether you would do it definitely or you would get the shot right and just touch up a little bit in post so no no i think post processing is very very important i i think it is it is a part of today's uh, our te- the technology has i mean today technology has given us so much it's given us the camera it's given us so post processing is a part of the technology again that yeah. that has enabled us to make it better and what do we all strive for we all strive to make it better so what the post processing does is it takes your image from a point here to a notch on top and and i think that's that's important uh we always try to take uh, make it better and and that's uh, that that post processing is very important i use it Amazing. probably for all the images that go onto the website all the images that go onto our coffee table books are definitely post processed we don't uh, you know we don't change the person's look completely you know we don't uh, brush their faces off to a extreme uh you know remove their dark circles we can keep those things as natural as uh, as they are but yes the rest of the environment you know bringing down the lighting uh you know uh, lifting up the you know getting the sun rays all those kind of post processing yes we definitely take care of all those uh, aspects and so uh, since we are ending the session uh, one message that you want to give to everybody in today's situation and for future okay so you know people uh, all all of us are definitely very very inclined to i'm sure a lot of lot of uh, uh, you know viewers out here at this point of time are into wedding photography and and uh, most importantly i would always say be yourself ensure that you and your client your couple are on the same you know you you strike you strike a balance with them let them know that you i mean they are human beings as well as you you're at the same level all you got to do is make sure that you are truthful you're honest you keep a rap over them and go with the flow the moment you go with the flow with them and you're honest with them you talk to them automatically things get uh, you know hap- you know happen very comfortably there are times when i don't meet a couple for the first time i probably meet them right at the set which is actually something that i personally also wouldn't like to do unfortunately they they don't live in the country they 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 just come down for their wedding for a week or so and you get to meet them right at the set and at times it it becomes uh, you know we walk into the room and there's this sudden silence there's no sight there's no noise people are not having a good time uh, she's getting her makeup done all in silence and and you're like am i the right have i knocked the right door am i at the right place and then you walk in you introduce yourself and you try and lighten up the mood you know you just get there and lighten up the mood make sure that you know you are you are actually uh, the director of that event in a certain respect where you need to ensure that you build up that positivity right from the moment you enter the door so if you get in with a negative feeling and you carry on with that negative feeling it's all going to uh, go ballistic and it's not going to work right so make sure that you bring in the positivity whether there is positivity in the air there or not the moment you bring it about automatically the environment changes people start looking at you like oh he's come in there now things are going to be okay you know so <laughs> do that and and trust me you, you know it's it's 
life that you you know you always will look back and say wow those, those were the moments so there are a couple of moments like that i've had in my life where i walk in and then suddenly the bright is a bright zilla and uh, you know you, you say oh my god now how am i going to do this and then you just go about it start talking to her you know try and uh, break the ice there and things just flatten out and smoothen out nice so enjoy yeah. your shooting enjoy your time with your couples with your clients and make it an experience not only for themselves but for yourself as well amazing thank you so much sir thank you so much for giving us your time and so many very important lessons to be learned during the journey of uh, photography and uh, during the journey of uh, wedding oh, photography at any time any time it's a pleasure anytime. and uh, thank you to Likewise. all the viewers who have been here and watching us live uh, and absolutely uh, if you have any questions left you can put in dm because we're really running out of time and instagram gives me only 60 minutes of run time to run these live sessions absolutely uh, and uh, hopefully we will be coming back for more and there was one request uh, there was one request uh, would you be doing a workshop uh, very soon and uh, on wedding photography and people who want to attend? yes yes we, in uh, fact like uh, in fact if you get on to uh, uh, my page on instagram uh, there there is a uh, uh, session that we're going to be starting off from next month with better photography uh right. we're doing three different sessions with them uh, so so do look into it uh anyone needs to know more about it just uh, you know send me a dm uh, a dm on my page and and I'll definitely get back to you immediately and uh, i think that's that would be a great way for you to learn a little bit more per uh, a sequence so so we're doing a sequential wise where i'm going to be talking about uh, right from making of the bride and groom right up to pre weddings right up to wedding events and uh, you know the wedding events also different uh, parts of the wedding events like from the haldi ceremony to the mehndi so all the you know the different ceremonies in 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 you know with with a little difference about how we can enhance these images in these kind of places nice so do do get on to insta have a look and uh, with better photography we're going to be doing this next month so guys don't miss out this chance it's going to be very interesting i have actually had the uh, privilege of attending one of the sessions called the making of the bride which is beautiful and uh, so thank you so much for uh, sharing your uh, wisdom with us and no, no, your experience appreciate it okay. thanks shitesh thank you so much thanks so much everybody and uh, be safe stay safe and you hope to see you guys thank you thank you take care thank you cheers take care bye So guys that was uh, PK Suri from PK Suri Studios worldwide an amazing 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 wedding photographer and he's done some brilliant work in the past and uh, some of his images have won awards some of his images have been looking really really beautiful and they are uh, something to be looked at if you have any questions about anything guys do dm me these questions we will take them up with him sometime in the future or whenever we can and get those answered other than this we have another session happening at 7 pm today it's a free session on street photography if you're interested in street photography it's a 100% free session uh if you don't have the link to the session dm me on instagram i will send you the link personally the meeting link personally if you it doesn't matter if you register or not uh i still have about four to five spaces left if you guys are interested just dm i will send you the link and we'll take your details later Again guys take care of yourself uh, we have an advanced photoshop uh, workshop uh, coming on sunday the link is in my bio don't forget to take that up uh, it is a very 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 beautiful uh, workshop that will teach you about editing images in photoshop and how to use the full potential of photoshop so guys take care of yourself take care of your family if you're staying home be safe if you're going out be very very safe ciao